Welcome back. The government today released a consultation paper for its online uh, gaming policy. It has proposed self-regulation, mandatory players, verification and additional due diligence. Online gaming companies will be covered under the new IT rules that were issued in 2021 for social media platforms. Stakeholders can give in their comments till 17th of January. We are uh, joined by the CEO of All India Gaming Federation, Roland Landers. Uh, uh, Roland Landers, thank you very much for joining us. Let me begin by asking you for your first reaction. The, the government is proposing self-regulation, a self-regulatory body as well. Most importantly, they're seeking mandatory verification of players on the gaming platform. Uh, your, uh, your first reaction. Yeah, our first reaction uh, would be as the, uh, you know, Apex industry body, the AIGF, and our stakeholders are extremely uh, happy with this, uh, you know, great first uh, step or first initiative toward formal regulation in the near future for, for this, uh, you know, Sunrise industry. And, uh, you know, our first reaction also would be to thank uh, the ministers at the METI and the IMTF, uh, the inter-ministerial task force that was set up. Uh, and I remember that, you know, when the consultation, uh, the consultation process started in uh, June with the Honorable MOS, uh, Mr. Rajiv Chandrasekhar, from then on to, you know, uh, probably in record time that the rules have been uh, announced and released by the METI is uh, usually commendable. And, uh, you know, as industry, uh, uh, the rules uh, that we've seen uh, for at first glance, uh, clearly indicate that, you know, the industry is more or less complying with, with the requirements and whatever needs to be done from here on uh, as the self-regulatory organization, the SRO, that, uh, that uh, you know, the METI has mentioned in the rules. Uh, likewise, you know, we'll align with the uh, stakeholders that we already have and also those who are not part of the, uh, of the AIGF and then move forward as per the uh, mandates of the rules. Right. Uh, I would also like to ask you, this is a legal framework that the government is now coming up with. Do you, uh, do you also feel you'll have to engage with different state governments because state governments will come up there with their own uh, uh, laws when it comes to online betting, wagering through uh, gaming companies? So, uh, so for whatever we have seen uh, in the rules right now, so it, uh, you know, does not get into the ambit of uh, skill and chance. However, uh, in, in the finer details, uh, obviously, uh, I don't think that situation would arise. But given the fact that, you know, the, uh, the industry now has a central nodal ministry, which in itself is a huge, you know, achievement uh, for us, uh, that would uh, entail that uh, we, we believe that, you know, a lot of states would be dissuaded from, you know, attempting uh, acts of their own, uh, especially that uh, that kind of stifle uh, the innovations and other progress that this industry, you know, is making and has been making since uh, the last 10 to 12 years. So that is, you know, you know, this entire ecosystem uh, kind of had roadblocks because the states tried and uh, tried to interpret uh, online gaming, you know, in a different manner, akin to uh, what they do for betting and gambling. So that was a roadblock, which, you know, a lot of the honorable courts uh, uh, kind of ruled in favor of the industry. But I think with, with a central nodal ministry now framing rules with, uh, you know, with the possibility of eventual, eventual regulation, that would dissuade, you know, these uh, things from happening. So right now, I don't think uh, that situation would arise. Okay. All right. One quick question. Uh, the industry has been seeking predictable progressive taxes. Uh, what is the road ahead as far as uh, your negotiations with the centre and state governments on the taxation structure goes? Yeah, so um, as you know, uh, as far as the uh, indirect taxes are concerned, uh, the group of ministers was set up about a year and a half back. And, uh, you know, they also, like the METI did, had an open and consultative process where the AIGF had the opportunity to meet with each of those uh, group of ministers and the eventual report that came out uh, and was submitted uh, last month, uh, you know, did uh, mention that, uh, that, you know, the, uh, the indirect tax, there are two parts to it, obviously, the rate and the, uh, and the uh, valuation. So the, the important uh, aspect for the industry was the valuation, where uh, the valuation should, of GSC should be applied on the 
uh, platform fee or the gross gaming revenue level. So we are now obviously in the last meeting, uh, it didn't come up. Uh, but whenever it does, that report would be the basis by which, uh, you know, the decision would be made. As industry, obviously, we remain hopeful that, you know, okay. the valuation would be applied on that level, on the platform. All right. We've run out of time. But Roland Landers, thank you very much for joining us with a quick reaction on uh, the draft, the policy draft on online gaming that has been released by the Ministry of Electronics and IT. And the Minister of State for Electronics and IT, Rajiv Chandrasekhar, spoke to Ashmit Kumar, a short while black. Let's uh, play out that interaction for you. So to begin with, uh, the framework that you've put out, uh, firstly, the, uh, being identified firstly as a nodal agency, uh, Métis, that was welcomed very broadly by the industry. Industry has been very keen on that and then looking forward to some kind of framework. The question I want to then ask is, one aspect that they were looking for clarity on from the center was perhaps clarity in making that distinction between games of chance mm -hmm. versus games of skill. Do you think that is something that uh, perhaps could have been done further? Look, no, no, but that's not really, uh, really our mandate to do at all. I, I, I think that is for the SRO that the industry uh, builds uh, with the government's oversight that uh, should do it if it is necessary. Uh, we, what we have done is really to create a framework that allows online gaming to expand. We think this is a very, very significant opportunity for the digital economy. We think there are hundreds and thousands of startups that are waiting to come into the online gaming space and have been held back uh, because of all the noise and ambiguity created by the various court orders relating to precisely the topics of games of skill, games of chance, and all of this other nuclear science around gaming that even sometimes I find difficult to understand. So we have, in a sense, made it, kept it very simple. What we have said is, Every young startup, every startup, every innovator who wants to get into the online gaming business has a very s steady, uh, precise uh, roadmap that he or she can follow. And uh, we have just principally laid down the go-no-go -go areas for uh, these platforms and uh, innovators, which is that as long as you don't do uh, wagering on the outcome of uh, the game, uh, you are free to do uh, gamify any any story that you want or gamify any plan that you want. Uh, so we have only basically kept it to the minimum. Uh, but as we do the consultation, if that if that needs to be more nuanced, if the mandate of the SRO must be more nuanced, that is something that we will cross. That bridge will cross as we con uh, complete the or, or we undertake the consultation. But our main intention is is to really expand the online gaming industry without compromising our goals of openness, safety and trust and accountability. And I think we, these rules do it.